Welcome. My name is Jared. Let's work on some 3D design with AutoCAD. Now, when we get there first, we're going to click on uh, that Start Drawing. Alternatively, we can go up to the Autodesk logo and hit New. Um, we can uh, create a set or way beyond what we need to actually do with it. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, just kind of define our working area. Before we do that, we just want to make sure that our um, scale is set to one to one. And then let's also type in the units command and ensure that we're working with the proper units for our project. Now I use uh, decimals, I use millimeters, and um, I use a fairly high precision just because you can't. I mean, I'm working with really small stuff, so it helps to have all that extra little bit that we can. And then uh, working with millimeters, um, if you work with inches or something, make sure you go ahead and change this here so that you're not doing conversions on the fly and everything's already set up the way that you want it to. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with the line command, and then I'm prompted to specify my first point after this. Now I can actually select it with the cur cursor, but I can also type in 0, 0, and it'll, it'll give me the origin point there. I'm also going to snap F8. Um, my orthographic line so that locks it to straight north south east west lines and I'm gonna build a box 160 units by 160 units this is roughly the size of my print bed so this is roughly the size that I'm going to work with them now I want to find the exact center of this and I work a lot in geometry geometric proportions like this i know that if i take from this line to this line from this corner to corner the midpoint of this line is going to be the exact center of my square here so if i take a circle and i base it off of that you know i can bring it all the way out to the edges here and get it to the center but i actually i don't want to make it that big um one of the designs that i was looking at said it about i think it was 55 millimeter diameter here so now this gives me my working area. This is going to be the actual area that I want my print to mostly take up. I've given myself a little bit of edges on the sides to, to give it some overspill or something. So I'm not actually meeting the edges of my printer. But I'm staying within the warm areas of my printer. So now from here, let's go ahead and do our design. Now I want to do a five-pointed star. Um, now the easiest way to do this is with a polygon. Now, I've already used my circle. I've given myself a center. I, the first option, the first question that's asking me here is into the number of sides. I want a five-pointed star, so I'm going to do a five-pointed polygon. And I'm going to proceed to get the outside of the circle first so that this center piece becomes um, attachable. And if this isn't available for you, Make sure that you have adjusted your 2D snap points. Um, so I like to include center snap point, quadrants, um, extensions, tangents are particularly useful, um, apparent intersections, and then you can turn these on and off as you want. But obviously I want the center, I want it to be within the circle, I don't want it to go outside of the bounds, and then right there. Now from here I can take my lines and I can just have fun with that. Do my star pattern on the inside, and then I'm going to use trim command to get every rid of everything that I don't want. And I'm just going to go ahead. Boop, boop. Oops. Let's try that again. Trim. I'm going to select everything inside here and remove this line, this line, this line, this line, and this line. Perfect. So now I should be able to remove my pentagon and I should be able to remove my circle and now I have essentially all of this. I'm going to use my join command. I'm going to run over this one time. Now I have essentially one continuous polyline that goes all the way around. Now the reason that I've done this method is because being familiar with Autodesk, I know what I'm what I can do with my extrude command. Now extrude is generally when i want to make something like um maybe i want to make like a small box here and i want to extrude it now i can make a 3d box out of my rectangle here and 
you know, you can actually do this all the way from a line. So I can take my line here, I can make this line 50. I can take this line, I can extrude it up 25. And then I can even take this plane and I can extrude that another 25. And now I have a 25 by 25 by 50 block. Um, something that I like to do with AutoCAD is you kind of create these little blocks and you create these shapes and you can subtract them or manipulate them in other ways. Um, I mean, that that's kind of all available with every software, but it feels more primal with, uh, with AutoCAD here. So now I'm going to take this and we've decided on a depth of about 10 millimeters. And now we're going to make the actual profile of the um, cookie cutter. So I want to isolate this. Well, first I'm going to do this. So this is five and then this is seven and a half. Boom, right there. All right. Now let's see if I can just do this. It's going to hate me. But sometimes it lets me do this silly stuff. So starting from here, I was able to create a spline. Perfect. Now I'm going to check if it's over the top. Yes. So I see I have a straight line here. Hopefully this is going to allow me to um, use my trim command here. And then... Nope. All right. So you kind of have to trick AutoCAD into doing weird stuff. I mean, I'm telling it to do weird stuff right now. It just doesn't like that. See, it'll, it'll doesn't matter if it's on its plane, but once I rotate this plane beyond the 3D of it, this is where AutoCAD actually breaks down. Um, and if you know how to manipulate this, then it's not a, it's not a huge problem, but it can, it can take time to do stuff that would take less time to do in other commands. Now I just skipped a whole bunch of stuff there that actually is probably pretty important. That's a, this is how well I know AutoCAD is that I can just do these on autopilot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and step back here. Okay. So the last thing I did was I left this line down here by accident, removing it. So I'm just getting rid of it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a region. I'm going to take these three lines that are completely separate entities and completely manipulable. I'm going to turn these three lines into essentially a joined line with a shared space in the center. And this is called a region. So it's going to look for one loop and then it's going to create this region. Now, if I change my visual code, my visual screen to a different thing, you'll see that this is X-ray. And if I actually take this region and I select this polyline that I did, now it turns it into a solid surface. Uh, but I don't want that. I just want this one. Because what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in my extrude command. And now I'll see one of my options available down here is path. So typing in E and enter. Now I can select a path like this. Boom. Now I follow the path that I created, that single singular polyline, that single one line polyline. And it's created me a star. And uh, I think I did this upside down. So let's just look at it from the other. All right. So now it's flipped over. So now I have a cookie cutter. Ta-da! Um, now what I would do from here is I take this into the 3D printer. I would see what it's going to do, and and I love that this is so easy from uh, AutoCAD. I'm going to type in the command STL out. And I'm going to press Enter, and it's going to ask me to select solids or water type meshes. Boom! Create a binary STL file. Yes. All right. Now it's going to come up here. Now I have my star cookie cutter, star cookie cutter, and save it. Boom, now I can open up Kira. My printer isn't on right now, um, but I would like to send that to the printer soon. Um, but I'll show you just how easy that was to create a file that loads into 
cookie cutter star cookie cutter that wasn't the first one i made there we go all right so this one take about 30 minutes to print so about 11 grams and uh speeds and feeds look pretty good layer height and then let's go ahead and inspect our layers make sure there's nothing crazy uh perfect perfect so it'll get some infill down here but there's just it's not going to be that much empty space in it and uh ideally that's great print all right let's send it <laughs> it's turned out really well um there's a couple issues with it uh i'll step back a little bit so we can get the camera focus um overall i am impressed with it but these points are like really sharp so we're gonna go in and design uh go into the design and round off these corners a little bit um i don't know if i necessarily want to round off the interior of the cookie and make a whole different design change to it or if i just want to you know trim these quarters which i'm going to do um the other thing is this is important to why you check um at the ends so this came out to 8.5 millimeter depth um so what had happened here is the material is less than the width of the printer so what the printer thinks is oh don't print um, those layers so it, it didn't print the topmost layers of the probably probably the most like 15 layers of the print um, so that's something that's easy to go into AutoCAD and, like figure out where those those lines are the width of the printer apart and then basically extend those lines up um, so we can create a different depth so this I felt like this was too short um, but it's also missing a millimeter and a half depth from what it's what I, I thought I was supposed to have. So the next design I might go with like 12 or 13 millimeters um, and I'll have it extended from this point. And, um, maybe I'll make a whole new video on like how we fix that. Well, that's all folks. Thanks for tuning in. And if you made it this far, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more content like this. Catch y'all later, folks.